So um, I think today is basically uh, a little bit of introduction on how the book club runs and getting to know ourselves um, as members of this book club. So let me go first and introduce myself. So my name is Shamsuddin and um, I'm a PhD student um, at University of Porto, Portugal. Um, I'm basically doing PhD in computer science um, with interest in social media stuff. And originally I'm from Nigeria. And uh, yeah, um, so thank you. Nice to meet you, Mary. And um, hope uh, you and I and every other person that joined enjoys this session. And uh, until we go uh, to the last part of the book. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much. Um, my name is Mary. Also, I'm a PhD student at the University of Abome Kalavi in the Republic of Benin. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I am also a Nigerian. Ah. And, yeah, <laughs> currently I am a research associate at the Africa Rice Center in IITA in the Badon, Nigeria. Also, ah, okay. Ah, nice, nice. I'm good to meet you. So I'm also like a, a teaching staff at Bayer University, Kano, Nigeria. I also teach there. Okay. All right. Thank okay. you. Thank you. So, um, yeah, so um, this book club is uh, R4 Data Science um, second edition. Uh, so basically there was um, R4 DS uh, first book club. Um, I think like one or two years, I um, I was part of um, this book club that run it from the beginning to the end. But now when I see the second edition with many addition with many other stuff being added, I say, oh yeah, I can, you know, go back out of fresh and just read, you know, um, we can constantly learn and learn. So if you look at this, the last edi previous edition, we have from chapter one to chapter 30. And now this is second edition, which is like ongoing. Um, uh, the uh, book is not yet finished, but they are updating the book. And we can see we have from chapter one to chapter 32. And this is a book that we'll be going through. Um, so uh let's look at how this book clubs run so um have you participated in any of this book club in r4ds no or? no this is my first time ah okay okay so this is really welcoming environment welcoming community where people just come and learn together and uh you know they offer help i made a lot of connection with many other people where i just you know uh, if I don't know something, I just, you know, chat them up and believe me, this is the right environment to learn. If, you, even if you are starting now, you are starting out. I was struggling before a lot, before I joined this community, but, um, you know, with this community, with the help and support, it really becomes easy for me to learn at the first pace. And so one way this club works is that to make them learn, you know, um, much way uh, people learn themselves is each person, anyone can volunteer to present a chapter. For me, for example, today I can say I'll present chapter one. You see, so you select the chapter you um you know uh want to present, but there isn't any kind of mandatory. But the best way to learn the material is just to you know volunteer to say, hey, I will present this chapter. That's the best way. And there is no expectation that you learn, you know, the whole concept in the chapter. The idea is you can go read and now you can present while discussing many people would come in and say, hey, oh, I thought it's this. And, you know, all, you know, putting their effort and, you know, um, contribution. I, I think that's the best way to learn. Um, so that we have like um, sign up sheets. So if you look at this one here, each chapter that, you know, if you want to volunteer, um, it is there in the Slack community in the pin post. Um, this uh, you can see like sign up. Um, uh, uh, book club eight. Uh, you can just write your name here and what's the wherever. So that will actually, um, you know, um, mean you can present. However, there are some situations where maybe you sign up, um, but then it turns out that you are busy or you may not make it. And so you can, you know, uh, notify me uh, in good time. Hey, um, just send me a message. Hey, I'm I'm so busy that I cannot be able to present this so, so, so chapter next week. So we can you know change and you know something like that. So that's how this book club works. And you see, um, uh, the presentations are recorded and you know uploaded into a YouTube video. 
where many people try to, um, you know, even if you don't have any decision, you can just join, um, watch the video and see what it is. So that's how the book full of format works. Just sign up, show up, present, that's it, and learn together. Um, but also, yeah, so um, this book, um, we can see like uh, this chapter one introduction um, called the whole game. This just introduced the book, what the book is. So um, uh, for each chapter, you see like there is chapter one, which is into the, I mean, uh, learning objective. So if you look at chapter two, um, there is learning objective, chapter three, um, learning objectives. Um, so the idea is, this is a summary of the book. This is the main book. And now for me, if I want to do chapter two, I will just write the summary. But thank God, um, many, you know, sessions, iteration of this book club, they have just uh, did the summary for each chapter. So maybe if you want to do chapter two, some there, there are already the summary. So you don't need to, unless if, for example, for the second edition, there's something you can add and stuff like that. But then also for the second edition, there is another um, um, cohort called seven. I think they are updating this, um, you know, book club. They are updating these uh, videos and stuff like that. This note. So, yeah. So let's look at the, um, so the introduction, basically uh, the introduction chapter talk about, um, you know, the typical data science project pipeline. Um, where we know that if you want to do anything data science related, the first thing you need to do is to import your data, right? Import your data, bring it into R. Um, there is tidy, transform, visualize, model, you know, communicate. So this is from beginning importing the data into maybe um, uh, R Studio to, you know, communicate your writing report and other stuff. This complete whole life cycle will be, you know, um, will be dealt in this book. So the first thing is import um, get the data from a data file or database or anywhere and bring it into R. Now, the next thing is tidy. So sometimes we know that data are messy in a natural way. Um, you can see data, for example, unstructured from a web or from you know, databases. So when you import your data, the idea is put it in a tidy format. This is some concept that ideally um, we can bring it. A tidy data set is make sure each column in your data is a variable and each row is an observation. So we'll see more about this tidy stuff. Um, then transform your data. So when you have your data in tidy, you can start transforming it, changing, creating another column, you know, many other things. Then you can visualize the data. Um, after you uh, download the, um, import the data, tidy it, visualize, then you can build model at the end of the day and, you know, communicate the result at, you know, program. So these are some of the steps that we'll see in this chapter but just highlighted them here that that's what we'll be able to see. Um, the next thing is the order of the content of the book. So you can see like here, we uh, mentioned the order of how we do data science. You know, we import the data, tidy the data, transform the data, visualize, um, model the data, you know, cycle and finally predict, uh, communicate. This is not how the book has been ordered. So one may say, okay, the first chapter may be import, then we go tidy, we know transform, we don't know. So the idea is uh, the import and tidy are boring. So we jump visualization and transformation. So what this is saying is that uh, because the importing and you know tidying the data is somehow kind of, as he said, boring because um, you see when you are doing data science, um, maybe as he said, 80% of, you know, um, data science of your data is this part, importing and tidying the data, right? Wrangling, data wrangling, putting in a shape. So this is boring part that it takes a lot of time, but uh, he doesn't want to bore us with, you know, something that's boring. He just want to start with something that is really cool so that, you know, somebody will not be put off with the, you know, the book. So he will just start using um, visualization and transformation. So if you look at this, you know, um, you know, the chapter, you know, the next chapter is data visualization. So um, one may, uh, he just given us like, don't assume that when we give, this is the natural sequence for data science that you assume that we're gonna start doing import tidy, but that's um, how the book. After we learn to wrangle tidy data because that is a necessary skill. 
So after this, then we can go back and wrangle the data that is important and um, tidy. Um, those base skills enable us to start uh, programming. Um, so these base skills um, like tidying the data, you know, visualization, they give us skill to start, uh, you know, doing that. Then finally, we can dive into modeling and communication. So we can see here, this is the, this chapter is called the holy game. So introducing uh, some stuff, then transformation, how you can transform your data given in one instance, then wrangling, how you can wrangle your data, um, then start programming, and now the last one, which is communicate. So this has, um, you know, different sections of the book that we'll be able to see. So you can see the whole game, transform, wrangle, program, communicate. So when we go back here, um, yeah, we can see import tidy, um, you know, all this is uh, part of um, uh, wrangle, um, and we have transform here. That this is the transform visualize and yeah so that's um yeah so the book does not cover everything that we expect to be done in data science if you have data that is so large enough um which is called big data so for example when you are using like data which is like more than 10 gig he advised don't use deployer because we're going to use um deployer package uh from tidy bus so he advised that don't use deploy or tidy bus use data data the table um which basically can handle large amount of data um yeah and the book does not actually as you know as you can see from the name of the book r doesn't cover python and julia and also does not cover an rectangular data so the book covers only rectangular data what we mean by rectangular data is like data with column and rows you know this is rectangular data so this book covers um you know how to deal with rectangular data and finally it doesn't uh discuss about this okay setting up environment I ask um, a question please yes yes um, hello yeah. yes uh when you say non-rectangular data mm -hmm. um does it mean that it's data of different lengths of columns or maybe genomic data from biological mm -hmm. Materials. What kind was non-rectangular? Because yeah. any data could be on tables and columns, but some maybe the column is not the same length. I don't know what that means actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Does, yeah. does right. um non does genomic data constitute non-rectangular? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right. Oh, okay. So yeah, is it, what what are you working on? Genomic, um, your area of expertise. Yeah, I yeah. So I also I'm a plant breeder. Or ah. I'm a plant breeding and genetic student. So ah, okay. we deal with data from phenotyping and genetics. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So when we say rectangular data, so we mean data that is table-like, you know, data that is in table, you know, that's rectangular. So from the name rectangular, you, um, you cannot have like a data. You can have data that, so for example, I have variable one and two. This variable is like uh, one to 20. And second variable is like one to 50. So you can see it's not rectangular if we put them together, right? In some ways. So this, the other one that is one to 20, it can be like NA, the other one up to 50. It can be NA, NA, NA. So it is now rectangular. So um, the idea is this book deals with data that can be represented in form of table-like. So for example, you know, uh, data from web, uh, unstructured data in webs. Um, okay, let me see. Um, no, no, no. Oh, okay, that, that's not what I want to do. Um, I don't know if I answer your question about that. Um, so the idea, as I said, any data that can be represented in, I don't know, like your genomic data, does, does that mean they cannot be represented in rectangular format or whatsoever or table like? I assume like um, each data, maybe it have some variables. So variable can be represented as columns and, you know, observation can be represented as a row. Does that mean um, the uh, uh, genomic data is not represented at that? Okay, so yeah, so that's rectangular data and um, setting up an R environment. So what we need to do to have this book running is basically uh, to make sure that we install R. That's the first one. We download R Studio. 
and now we install tidy bars and also um, you know additional packages that we'll be using in this book um, so these are some of the things we we need to do to have to set up our environment um Yeah, so running the code, um, you know, in R, uh, the books gives you some kind of uh, 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 way in which the book, when, uh, so for example, if you look at this, this is, um, you know, code, the way the book shows the code, you know, so that's not how, this is the output, and, you know, after running this kind of stuff, uh, this book shows both the input and output, so don't freak out. <clears throat> Um, so getting help. So when you are stuck, where are you going to go first? So pay attention to the errors. Uh, this means that uh, uh, whenever you have an error, don't, you know, you know, just pay attention to the message because the tidy, uh, you know, bars messages, they are somehow he helpful in the sense that they are, you know, self-explanatory in some sense. Um, just read what happened and copy the error you have and paste it in Google and you'll be able to see the answer. And also uh, go to Stack Overflow. And of course, um, R4DS community um, is really helpful. If you are on Twitter, tweet with R stars, um, which is very um, uh, active. Uh, you will uh, get a response from your question if you have um, instantly, I can say. Um, yeah, so that's basically, uh, you know, how this kind of book club structured and, this chapter uh, today we see uh, is basically um, telling us what we're going to see um, when we dive in into the book. And the next week will be data visualization chapter, which will discuss about how you can visualize your data, how you can do a lot of other stuff. Right. Yeah. Um, so I think uh, um, we have um, this the meeting videos uh, for the previous cohort um so our cohort will also be uploaded here yes okay cool so i think um that's what i have today um if there is any question you can ask um, before we go and um yeah even if you have any question regarding the book just um talk to me in the slack uh, or in the channel um, so that many people can see your question and uh, we can, you know, work on it. All right, thank you. Um, thank you all and uh, see you next week. Bye-bye.